So uh, what happens in the last decades about transfusion medicine and uh, critical care uh, uh, units? First of all, I have uh, no, uh, nothing to disclose uh, with respect to uh, uh, conflict of interest. So I will talk about red cell transfusion. I will not talk about plasma and platelets. I don't have the time. And most of my talk, uh, uh, talk will be about safety issues, limiting red cell transfusions, and uh, uh, a few words about length of storage of red cells units. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that anemia is common in critically ill children. It is up to 74% of our patients. Uh, uh, and there is a clear association between anemia and mortality. But I will say that again and again. It is not because there is an association that there is a cause-effect relationship. But there is an association, and there can be a, a, a cause-effect relationship. Well, we, we find the same kind of relationship between red cell transfusion and, and, and mortality. So. Uh, 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 red cell transfusion is the only rapid way to restore hematocrit, but is it safe? And, and is it better than just looking at, uh, uh, um, to the patient and not giving any transfusion? Remember that in the 70s, I start uh, as a resident in pediatric in the 70s, and uh, when there was anemia, you have to do something. And I was told red cell uh, units are safe. You can give it if you believe it can help patients. The only concerns were uh, incompatibility, hemolysis, and things like that, and they were quite well controlled. In the 80s, we start to be concerned with transfusion trans transmitted infectious disease. Remember that in the late 70s and in the 80s, we start to have strong data showing that there is a that transfusion can cause hepatitis and then HIV and then uh, many other uh, viral disease. So we start to be uh, aware of all those things. Is it still a problem presently? Well, these are uh, data from Canada two years ago. And as you can see, the risk to get uh, or to contract HIV, hepatitis, uh, and even uh, a bacterial infection is very low. Uh, actually, presently, the uh, red cells unit are safer than ever. They are safer in Canada and countries like that. Remember that, uh, in, well, for example, in African countries, they just don't test for virus disease. They can't. So it's safe in some countries. It's not the case elsewhere. Uh, and there, there will, will always be some concerns of blood, uh, of. Uh, uh, those who provide blood products because of emerging disease, like Babebios, uh, Chagas disease, Dengue, etc. There will be new virus that will come out, like maybe Ebola in, uh, presently. Uh, nevertheless, in the last two decades, uh, we shift our attention in transfusion medicine to what we name NICHOT. NICHOT means non-infectious serious hazards of transfusion if you want to get definition of all the nice shot there, go to the, the site of the uh, hemovigilance system in UK, it's a great site, and shot is for serious hazard of transfusion, it's easy to remember. And you will see in that site that one of, there are many concerns, but the buzz is one, tr transfusion related acute lung injury, uh, transfusion associated circulatory overload, all those things are uh, more and more uh, re uh, frequently reported and recognized as complication of red cell transfusion. Uh, is it a problem in critically ill children? Probably more than any other kids because almost all our patients uh, present a systemic inflammatory response syndrome, if not MODS. And if you shoot something like uh, red cell units, uh, that contains all the time some pro and anti-inflammatory uh, mediators and many other stuff that we don't like so much, you just increase the risk that this become a second hit and that you cause a mod or uh, that you worsen mods. So uh, uh, to give you an example, uh, one of the, uh, in my own unit, we put attention in the last two years on what we name transfusion-associated respiratory complication. Why? Because I and, well, we believe that these are uh, under-diagnosed uh, and under-reported. And this is the case because presently the definition of uh, transfusion-associated respiratory complication uh, 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 is, uh, those definitions are, are appropriate for patients who are asymptomatic. 
But in those definitions, uh, it's written that the patient should be asymptomatic before they start the transfusion. So it eliminates all our patients because most of our patients who receive a transfusion already have sy uh, respiratory symptoms. So we just look at what we name progressive uh, uh, respiratory dysfunction. Uh, the question was, uh, can we see some worsening of respiratory uh, function after, uh, after a transfusion? And well, we observe su uh, such deterioration of the respiratory function in 52% uh, of transfused patients in that small prelim preliminary studies. Uh, most of them uh, uh, present what we name respiratory dysfunction, uh, progressive respiratory dysfunction, because we observe a 20% deterioration in, in blood gas data and things like that. We observe also a few, uh, uh, what has been named delayed trally, trally that happens, or transfusion uh, related acute lung injury that happens more than six hours after transfusion. Is this a problem? I, I, I show that slide just because I believe it, it questions people. It must question you, and there is room for research there. Uh, but I believe that we are missing something uh, 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 with respect to uh, the impact of red cell transfusion on the respiratory function of our patient. In the 90s, those, then we shift our attention from, as I told you, infectious disease to um, uh, another question, is it safe to give less red cell, tra red cell transfusion? Because if, if there is an association, the first reaction will be, can we give less red cell transfusion? You are, uh, some of you are aware about, uh, uh, on the TRIPQ study, that study, uh, I, I, I just want to raise the point and, and rem remember people that the first question was not about threshold hemoglobin. It was, the first question was, is this patient stable? And the definition of stable was exactly what is written there. Uh, uh, the mean arterial pressure is not less than two standard deviations below normal for mean for age, and there was no increase in the cardiovascular support in that patient in the last two hours. If the patient was stable as defined, then they were uh, eligible for TRIPQ, and then we look at the uh, hemoglobin level. And in, this, in that study, there were two thresholds, you know that, and, and patients who were allocated to the restrictive groups, just uh, 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 these are the results, show no difference at all. What is funny also is when we look at the um, uh, outcome uh, uh, in all subgroups, and I, it's on purpose, you can see there was many planned subgroup analysis and unplanned. In all subgroups, we get the same results. There was great consistent self-results, and this is not so common in RCTs. So uh, the, the lesson there is that uh, uh, the, uh, the results of arterial PQ are applicable to all those patients. Now, presently, what's the main concern? Well, the main concern is about age of blood. I have just a few slides left. Um, uh, I want to remember that the determination of the upper limit of red cell shelf life, uh, which is 42 days in Canada, uh, uh, was not determined by scientific means or something like that. It was determined on, on, on criteria that uh, uh, were quite, uh, can be questioned uh, quite a lot. Two studies has been done on that. The REP study has been done in neonatology. I will not go through that slides, but Dean Ferguson completed a nice, a nice study showing that giving fresher blood to new uh, prematures rather than uh, older blood does not really make a difference. Uh, uh, and I want to raise the point that presently there are six ongoing uh, RCTs on length of storage, five in adults, the ABLE study, the first results will be presented here this afternoon, and the ABCPICU study that is run by Phil, uh, Marisa Tucci, Phil Spinello, and myself. In adults, there, was, there is one study that has been uh, uh, not published, but uh, presented at the a ABB, uh, and they found no difference in patients who receive fresher blood. These were uh, adult cardiac patients, and they find absolutely no difference in what was the primary outcomes to, uh, uh, measure of that study, which was MAD score. So no difference. In conclusion, there, uh, severe anemia is common uh, in, uh, in our patients, 
the uh, red blood cell transfusion are also associated with mortality. There is evidence that too many red cell transfusions are still given to critically ill children. What determinant should drive us to prescribe red cell transfusion to critically ill children is still unclear presently. But remember, hemoglobin concentration is always in the picture. More attention must be put on nice shot, and we don't know presently if fresh blood is better than old blood. So uh, what's the future? Future is about uh, probably uh, not only uh, age of blood, but also cost-benefit studies, knowledge application, and things like that. I thank you for your attention. These are, you have a list of other research projects that uh, can be done in the field. Thank you.